Hi, my name is John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap has got the usual mixture of things. That's some plasma cutting, some lathe work, a little bit of welding, a proper mixed bag. The first thing I'm going to do is grow out the name for the little DPI gauge from last week. Right, there's one. But I've got two, so I'll, I'll put that one back. Yeah, right, that was probably yours. Right, the name I've got is Doug Skewick. Can't pronounce that. I get the Doug bit. Right, Doug, all you've got to do is send me an email with your address and I'll get that little DPI posted off to you. I'm going to do another giveaway this week. This time it's going to be for a plasma cutout of a traction engine, two mil steel. I painted this one black, sometimes I'll leave them steel coloured. Just depends. As usual, if you want a chance at winning that, all you have to do is send me an email. That's my email address up there. I need your name, your full name, like John Mills, not just John. Your name goes into the bucket. If it's drawn out, I'll post that off to you anywhere in the world, completely free of charge. If you don't like traction engines, I can do you a Land Rover or a car, basically a horse, anything you want. But that's what it's for, a traction engine. I've got two more gears to do for my friend Mick. Um, he's made the blanks, so I've got to broach them and put the teeth on them. The problem is the same as I had the last time, I can't get the brooch in there. So what I did the last time was I used these two, these two stud holes and I extended it. Well, unfortunately, that's actually wider than the, the width of the two stud holes, so I can't use that option. So what I'm going to do, I've cut two bits of this angle two lengths of that, that can be bolted on down through there so that's bolted on nice and tight and I can weld a tube onto here and I can use these hold down bolts off my milling machine and I can join them together and have any length I want and I'll use the plasma to cut out a new base plate I'm not going to be putting any gears bigger than that and that's obviously going to fit in there quite nicely so I'm going to cut two bits of this, square them up, drill the holes in them, and weld a couple of nuts on for a start off. I'm going to just spot through. It's a big hole that's in there anyway, it's a slotted hole. Yeah, we've got a slotted hole there, we'll put a decent sized hole in. There's 12 mil studs with a nice big washer on the top. It'll be all loose and wobbly until it's clamped up tight and then it'll hold, hold itself in line. It'll be So now I want two lugs on there so I can put these studs down through it, make a plate for the bottom. The plate will be clamped up against parallel so nothing will move around, it'll be quite a sturdy, a sturdy job when I'm finished and I'm only going to be broaching when it's steel but basically these gears are just tough enough. It just makes the press a lot more versatile, I had extended it uh, but the gap in there, the throat in there wasn't big enough. But obviously the distance I've got between those two, I can definitely get that in.
I've got a piece of square bar here, quarter of a skip, I'm not quite sure what it is, some sort of bracket for something. But I'll just cut two bits off, drill them, then weld them onto there, and then the strut will go through that. I think it's probably the first time I've used this so it's a butcho chuck for something square, to tell you the truth. We'll just square the ends up and put a 30mm hole down through it. So we're going to use 12mm studs on it. Makes it look better and there's no real sharp edges to bang your hands on. That. Well, that's the end of a five mil drill. That was rather uh, annoying. You clumsy bastard, you John. Just as it broke through. But what I can do is machine the back of that off until I find the drill and then punch it out. That was uh, very careless of me. Okay, there it is. Of course, I'll just destroy the tip as well at the same time. I'm going to make a proper job of it. Right, it's refusing to come out, it's stuck halfway in there, so I think what I'll do, instead of making another one, which would be the easiest way, I'll spend a little bit of time and see if I can get it out. That's a carbide milling cutter, a bang good one once again, so it's bang good versus bang good. We'll see what, see what happens.
Stephanie machine in the drill. I've tried punching it out now that it's machined half of it away. Try it from the other end. Well, it's out anyway. Just disappeared. It's in there. So not something you'd normally do, but it, it did show how good these little carbide end mills are. And I want to drill that block without too much hassle. So that needs to go in the centre of that board. And that's obviously trying to be square that way, that's the most important thing. So we can get one of these clamps onto it. I'll get a tack of weld onto it and then I'll possibly bring the camera in and see if I can get a decent arc shot of that being welded onto there. I don't think that'll be going to come off there in a hurry. Stud through there and I can make any length of stud up I want to get any height in I need. I need to make a base now, cut a base out to um, press on to. Let's see what material I've got to make a base. I think I've got some half inch plate or probably plasma cut something out of that. Not much of matter with that really is that it's curved with a bit straight through. I'm ready to hack that bastard out by hand. The plate has come off the plasma cutter. 
it has a little bit of tape on it it's something you do get with plasma but basically it's not too bad at all that right so that's going to be mounted underneath there like that use a transfer punch to pick those two holes up and that's going to be going to do the job quite nicely <laughs> 